Okay, let's go back. <laughs> All right, let's start again. Okay. Welcome everyone to Isabella Banks YouTube channel. It's your host, Wheezy. If you're new to my corner of the internet, a very warm welcome to you. Where today we're going to be diving into the world of Isabella Banks YouTube channel. I had so much to talk about and I completely dreaded. I completely dreaded the number of hours it would take for me to edit the very long video that would have been produced. It would almost have been a two hour video if I had to do that. That is almost like two days of editing just to get a two hour video done, just because I have to balance my home life and work life to get it all sorted. So I thought it would be easier for me to do a live and i was busy rabbiting on for 10 to 15 minutes and there was no sound anyway thank you guys for letting me know that there was no sound hopefully we can get this live done with no more hitches how are you all been anyway how's the week been for you how have you coped with the avalanche of news left right and center the drama is intense at the moment um i've got the tier list on the screen because i thought it might be an idea to do a ranking video i find that when i do these videos it helps me determine what direction what the agenda of the media is at the moment i just love to analyze and look beyond the headlines so this ranking template just helps me rank all the videos to determine which ones are the rubbish stories and which ones we need to really pay attention to so hopefully you will find it interesting and enjoyable as well since you said you didn't hear all that i had said at the beginning before let's just go through the categories again so um the categories if you haven't uh, listened to a ranking video before uh the categories are just five you've got the let's talk about it these are juicy truths which have been told or presented to us it can also very much be a developing story so we pack all factual stories reported in the news in this category the second story the second category is the reinforcement of the smear campaign so we are all aware that the media has declared war on prince harry and Meghan's reputation and this category is their battleground so brace yourselves for the stories that are meant to uphold that narrative because obviously the media in this category are basically saying we've got our story and we're going to be sticking to it okay great and the third category is the page filler category. You see, when the media are scraping the bottom of the barrel, since Harry and Meghan are not giving them anything <laughs> to report on anymore, this category comes into play. These are the stories they conjure up just to fill their spaces. Since anything to do with Harry and Meghan in the title or description of the story draws traffic to the website or the column. And spoiler alerts, just for people who have not been through this ranking videos before, it's just that there's no story, there's nothing of substance related to the stories which are parked in this category. And every now and then, a ridiculous story comes in, which is just best packed in the funny category. Laughter is the best medicine. When you can't cry, you better laugh. <laughs> And then you've got the trash category, which is the ultimate eye roll category. It's a story that falls into this bin. It's pure nonsense. It's not even worth us wasting our time talking about it. But we pay attention to it just to indicate for people who are novices in the battle to let them know that this is a story that they should not pay attention to. So I hope you got all of that. If you did, now let's get into the stories. 
So the first on our menu is the one where they are talking about William, who said Prince Harry's attack on Kate Middleton was the lowest of the low for Prince William. So this story is such a far reach. They're reaching so hard, they may as well turn into Mr. Plastic. <laughs> This headline refers to Harry's comments in his book, The Spare, where he claimed that men in his family often face a temptation or an urge to marry someone who would fit the mold rather than someone that they are destined to be with. And the two couples that immediately come to mind are his father, right? You only have to look at the disaster of Prince Harry's parents' marriage to see the truth of that statement. And the other person who comes to mind is William. So it's been widely, it's been widely rumored that he's been caught cheating on his wife several times during the course of their marriage, not to mention how long he made Kate wait to marry her. And lately, he's reported close closeness to a certain lady who has rose in her name, allegedly. <laughs> so I noticed, right, under this um, column, I noticed that a lot of stories which came out last week, they're just pushed back against um, Prince Harry's book, The Spare. This was the, the book that was supposed to be the reply to The Spare. So, for instance, just look at this uh, seemingly harmless, um, seemingly harmless headline. Prince and touching gesture to Prince Harry as he arrived to say final goodbye to Spare. Again, this is in response to a story from Prince Harry's book, The Spare, where Prince Harry said that after he had finished paying his respects to the queen, that there was nobody there. And you might wonder, okay, so if they're repeating the same story, what was the point of telling the story? My theory is that this was an entry point for the next story. The next story was that Prince Anne had been ordered to wear that her huge hat, which blocked Prince Harry's vision at the coronation. So they said, according to many viewers watching the coronation, they thought that Harry had been deliberately placed behind his queen, um, behind Anne's tall hat to obscure his view. Uh, but the author of the book titled Charles III, New King, New Court, The Inside Story, the book that is causing the utmost commotion at the moment, he says that the, prin the princess only switched to the seat in front of Harry because she had requested for a place in the church which will allow her a speedy exit. And, he, all she, uh, and they, he also said in the book that the princess herself had also had a problem wearing the hat and questioned it when she was asked to wear it. But she was told that she needed to wear, wear the hat. And I thought, really? 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 Did they really, really think that the British public are that stupid? But apparently they do. And do the British public not behave as though they are stupid? I think that they all, I would also say that they do. Any reasonable person, thinking person will ask why that particular chair? Why does she need to suddenly sit in that particular chair? Why did she suddenly why did she suddenly need a speedy exit? These things are planned to the nth degree. So it's not possible that this was not taken into consideration before. Uh, the service began and if she suddenly changed her mind and she noticed that her hat would be blocking someone's view what did she do about it absolutely nothing the next headline is another rebuttal and the one that says why prince william was asked to have dinner with king charles the night queen elizabeth died but prince harry was not Again, as I said, this is an attempt to rebut Harry's book. Um, he noticed 
that everyone had gone. After he had finished paying respects to the queen, Harry had said he was left on his own. So this author, in defense of the royal family, is saying that the royal family had decided to exclude Harry from dinner with them because they didn't want Harry taking notes for his upcoming book. Imagine how vengeful and petty and vindictive this makes them look because Harry did not ask to join them at a work meeting. They could have had dinner, right? And gone off to their secret meeting. But of course, you know, if they're not trying to cut off Harry's head, what are they doing? Anyway, so going back to the first story, which was Anne's touching gesture to Prince Harry as he arrived to say final goodbye to the Queen in the grand scheme of things. What does their rebuttal do? I guess that this is their attempt to rewrite history. It's good to keep an eye on this as time goes by. I don't expect that Prince Harry will allow things to end here. I fully expect full pushback from Harry. And to that end, I would say that this should go into the let's talk about it category. And I'm just going to place it there. And I will come back to all the stories that are placed in the let's talk about it category at some point. Okay. So the next story which we have to discuss is the, let's see. Next story is the queen protected weak Andy with fears he'd be more damaging outside of the loop. Just looking at the body of the story, this is in response to everyone's question on why the queen protected Andrew despite the horrendous Epstein claims and then went on to pay 12 million pounds to a girl that he claimed he had never met. <laughs> Oh, it looks like they can now see how bad it makes the queen look and they're trying their best to clean that up. I'm trying to make a buck while they're at it because if you look at the story, they used an opportunity to tell the re to retell the entire story. So while they're trying to clean the story up with one hand, on the other hand, they are retelling the story in the same article. So ridiculous. <laughs> I saw a connected story to that, which said fears for Prince Andrew's well being as Duke was almost incoherent following royal exile. They say he locked himself inside a room and wouldn't come down after he was forced to step down from his royal duties. Basically, saying, basically saying that. Andrew was depressed. The question is, were they concerned about Harry and Meghan's mental health? No. So this is just them trying to say or explain why King Charles continues to protect Andrew and confirming that they will continue to protect him and they don't care what the British public have to say about it. Anyway, this story should go into the let's talk about it category just simply because I believe that it's going to come back again and we're going to need to talk about it again. So it's a developing story as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So a lot of notifications are going on. I don't know what's going on. Some There's a lot of notifications going on at the moment. Sorry for the noise. Anyway, so going back to our list of stories, up next is the conclusion to the Lilygate drama. <laughs> Had you uh, guys ever seen anything like that? Had you guys? There's no angle of foolishness that was not explored. <laughs> Sorry, I should have been looking at the comments. I saw um, uh, Lorna who said, I'm glad Princess Anne 
blocked the fake ass lip readers from making up stories about Harry's conversations. Ooh, that's a point. I didn't think about that. That is a very good point indeed. Yeah. Anyway, just going back to this Lily Gates. Um, just going back to the Lily Gate drama. After the Queen got dragged all over social media for being petty and racist and for being angry that Harry and Meghan had chosen to name their daughter Lilibet after her, the royal family's PR machine jumped in to clean up the mess that they had made, which had backfired so bad, like Michael Jackson's Moonwalker with the headline that said, no one owns a name, not even the queen. Just reading through the article, I could see that it was a masterful takedown of the British media. She said, just looking at it, I found the article she wrote so interesting. And if you just give me a moment, it won't take long. I'll just read this to you. So she said, when my half Italian mother was pregnant with me, she debated a huge range of girls' names, but none felt right. She liked Gabriella, but she worried people might call me Gobby Gabby. She was probably right. For a while, I was going to be Francesca. But once I was born, she just didn't think it suited me. So I was nameless for a while and my parents began to worry. I was just going to be baby girl forever. Then a colleague of my father's named his newborn daughter Allegra. Oh, my mom said, sounding worried. What's the matter? My dad asked. I really like that name. They agonized for a while over whether it was okay to use someone else's name. But they loved it and they were out of alternatives. So after a few days with baby girl still nameless, my dad asked his colleague if he'd mind also calling his daughter Allegra. Luckily, he and his wife were touched and only too happy for them to use it. It probably helps that this other Allegra and her parents lived in Chicago and we weren't likely to run each to each other again. But of course, they were pleased my parents loved their daughter's name. Why would anyone have a problem with someone naming their child after their loved one? Well, the queen did, allegedly. Reports on this story are a little fuzzy. One of the royal insiders claiming this was an issue said there was likely to have been a call from Harry to tell the queen he hopes to use his daughter Lilibet, to call his daughter Lilibet, and she probably didn't feel she could say no. But now a book includes a claim from one source that the queen was as angry as I'd ever seen her. Given all the things the queen had to be angry about, at least the allegation, not least the allegations against her son, the Duke of York, it seems odd that the naming of a tiny baby after her, her childhood name was the one that made her the most furious. What grandmother gets angry about her adorable granddaughter being given her name? Well, if it's true, I'm afraid it's just not her right. No one owns a name. It goes on, but I'll stop there just because the point has been made in the most politely savage way possible. I think the British media were hoping the international media would join them. <laughs> in shaming Harry and Meghan only to find out that they had succeeded in making the Queen look petty and racist they ended up backtracking so fast they made Michael Jackson look like an apprentice at the moonwalk <laughs> and for those that were wondering I suspect that part of the reason why the media backtracked on this story was that Harry and Meghan had actually previously sent out legal letters when this first when this story first broke. Anyway, for all intents and purposes, I threw this story straight into the reinforcement of the smear campaign category. And we'll just dump it there and come back to the ranking machine later. So continuing on, continuing on, I've seen this happen when other content creators are doing their lives. <laughs> and I thought I had cleared all of these issues. I told everyone I was doing a live and no one should call me, but everyone sending me messages now and calling me all at the same time. <laughs> I'll just switch my phone off just a second. Just do that. 
<laughs> oh, and before we continue, can I just invite you all? Uh, all if you're not already a subscriber of the Isabella Banks YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button for access to jaw-dropping media revelations and news updates. If you're a returning subscriber and you haven't already subscribed, please decide today to subscribe to my channel. It's important. To <laughs> for those who have already subscribed, welcome back and thank you for subscribing. Please don't forget to hit the like button and thank you and let's dive back in. Okay, going back to what we were discussing, um, we were talking about this story. So I threw this story straight into, I threw the story straight into the reinforcement of the smear campaign. So moving on to the next story, which was Harry and Meghan uh, walking a tight financial, a walking financial tightrope nightmare as ideas run out. So this is the media with no news. They're being starved of news. Harry and Meghan are doing an excellent job of starving them of any news. So now they are making up stories. They don't have any news and they're making up stories. This, the author of this story says, they could find themselves walking a financial tightrope simply to survive. What immediately worries me is the alarming lack of any other original content on their roster. According to reports, the company's latest project is a film adaptation of the romantic novel, Meet Me at the Lake. Meet Me at the Lake. On this project, the executive said, Netflix bought the book they're adapting, but the question everybody in Hollywood is asking, can they actually pull this off without either of them having any real prior experience? This is a make or break year for them in every sense. Either their company turns this project into a success or they could face a financial nightmare if Netflix pulls the plug on a new contract with them in 2025. The question is, what is your business? What's your beeswax, British media? You said they're irrelevant. So why are you bothered? Why are you bothered? Personally, I think that this should go into the smear category. Their intent is just to make potential business partners feel like Harry and Meghan are too risky to work with. So we'll just put it in the reinforcement of the smear campaign category and move on to the next story. And move on to the next story, which talks about the um, Danish queen abdicating. So this, this, this to me, this story was so, so funny. It was talking about Queen Marguerite abdicating so that Mary and Frederick didn't end up like Charles 75 and Camilla 76. I thought, what? <laughs> the shade. So the minister said, there is no other explanation apart from her health that she feels tired. Other than that, she thought that Frederick and Mary should not end up like Camilla and Charles, who became a royal couple at 75 years old, where they look more like a couple who need a sheltered home more than a castle. Could it be that the Danish house are not as friendly to the Windsor house as we think? And also... This headline favors William's position. We all know that William has been advocating for Charles to abdicate for the longest. Is this another way of humiliating his father into abdicating? I should go. What do you guys think? I thought that this was so funny. So, so funny. I am going to put this in the funny category. So here you go put that in the funny category. Let me look at your comments. 
And talking about uh, cookies and cream says the unroyal family don't realize how ridiculous these stories make them look racist, arrogant, petty, savage, sadistic. <laughs> Tell them how you really feel, cookies and cream. But you're yeah, also absolutely correct. <laughs> absolutely correct. <laughs> and um, Belize says it's the Bella Banks. Belize, I'm curious. Yeah, it's Bella Banks. That's my name. And. One day, I'm going to do, very soon, I'm going to do a get to know you video just because I just think um, uh, it'd be nice to have a chit chat video as well. And this comment, EB Lean 35 says, I believe the story about Lady Bet's name and anything H&M was done to sell this book. There's an article about the book this that has a picture of H&M only. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was done to stir controversy to help draw attention to the book. Anyway, so let's continue. Let's continue. So I, I saw another funny story. You would not get what, guess what this one was. So this one says, Princess Anne, chicest woman in the world, as Fendi hails her as inspiration for new menswear collection, I collapsed. <laughs> yeah, because men's, how is that a compliment? How is that a compliment? So the article said, some might be surprised to learn that Fendi's menswear collection for autumn winter has Princess Anne to thank for its inspiration. It was the headline for me. Are you serious? Anyway, anyway, this should go right, it, right into the funny category. We don't need to talk too much about it. I don't know whether Anne would find this story to be a compliment. I don't know why they allow themselves, the media to take the piss out of them the way that they do, but seems like that's, is, the transaction that they made. So moving on to the next headline, which talks about uh, inside Harry and Meghan's close friendship with Mike and Zara Tindall, which is turning to rivalry. So this is just an eye rolling type of article. Was talking about a so-called PR expert who reckons that because Zara and Mike were seen hanging out with Crin. Chris Hemsworth in Australia recently, that this means that they could become more successful than Harry and Meghan in America. Guys, are you guys going to allow that happen? And on the other hand, I thought they said royals are not supposed to use their royal status for commercial gain. So is it okay when other royals do it, but when Harry and Meghan do it, it's a problem? This tells you that none of all these things they talk about have anything to do with what they're complaining about. It is a deeper, larger issue. It's an annoying little piece which ordinarily would go into the page filler category because it's meaningless and it's just meant to prop up Mike and Zara which they already know would not be successful, even as they write this silly story. However, they followed the story up with another one. Remember how I told you earlier that they begin a storyline with some innocent headline as a primer or like a warm-up for a headline? Well, behold this wonderful headline, which says, is it time for Mike and Zara to replace Prince Harry and Meghan? popular couple are already comfortable in the limelight and swapping their money-making deals for public duties could fill the gap. They really want to convince everyone that Harry and Meghan are no good and that Mike and Zara are a viable alternative to step up for the royal family if needed. So demonstrating the budding relationship with Mike Tyndall 
is a good reason for the elevation in status. Looks like William is gathering his king's men together, preparing for a time when he will take over. Remember last year when Will and Kate joined Mike Tyndall on his podcast and Mike Tyndall's comments on Harry and Meghan? It feels like there is a recruitment exercise going on within the royal family right now for someone to just step into Harry's shoes. And they think that Mike and Zara's fans will help compete against Prince Harry's popularity. <laughs> what do you guys think in the comments? Do you think that uh, this is possible? I'm sure I don't even need to ask anyway. Um, because... Um, Mike and Zara were in the UK when Harry and Meghan were here and they still eclipsed their popularity even though they had sports fans behind them so it's not even a question I, it, you must be a great person when you literally have to, to have almost how many people replacing you right now they've tried to drag in Beatrice, Eugenie Zara, Mike, and everybody else. <laughs> anyway, um, it is a story to watch for all intents and purposes. It is a story to watch. So I'm just going to put this in the let's talk about it category and move on to the next one. Okay, so the next headline which caught my attention was... Meghan and Prince Harry won't be at Emmys after devastating snub. From what I can see, uh, the point of this headline is to point out that Harry and Meghan's documentary did not win an Emmy despite being nominated and despite bringing in over 81 million watch hours for Netflix. According to Ingrid Seward, our favorite monarchist journalist, Royal Rudent, who plays in the sewers, told the Mirror that the Duke and Duchess have been left devastated, she said, devastated, after they learned that they were not in the running to take home the prestigious award. Quick question, how did Ingrid Seward know this? Anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one uh, because it is just really a page filling type of article it's we'll, we'll, before we move on to the next one I will just put this article in the page filler category there you go and then we'll move on to this story which says Meghan Markle's relaxed parenting roles pulls apart from Kate Middleton's says royal expert I thought this is just another way of them pitting Kate against Meghan. It's such a rubbish story, though. And, but it also tells you that there's no law that the British media would not go to. And guess what? Straight to the trash can it goes. There you go. Straight to the trash can. No need to spend much time on it. <laughs> So the next story is this one, which I thought was a very interesting headline, talking about Prince William could be the first king to not lead the Church of England in five centuries, in 500 years. So in this same book, Hardman says there is a speculation over whether Prince William could Sever a 500-year tie with the Church of England when he becomes king. In he says that in royal circles, it's no secret that he does not share the king's sense of the spiritual, let alone the queen's unshakable devotion to the Anglican Church. <laughs> the dramatic way they write, do you know? It's not until this issue, right, with Harry and Meghan, that I just noticed the overly dramatic way that the British people write compared to the American way. And uh, as you will see in another article where I'm uh, discussing Kate, Kate and King Charles's sudden medical 
announcements, you can just see the difference in how they report factually. Anyway, so um, if I remember correctly as well, William does not seem to have an interest in anything except the king's title and perhaps helicopters and rose bushes. And if I also remember correctly, Prince William is said not to care about whether he will become head of the Commonwealth. In fact, he is not interested in becoming uh, head of the Commonwealth. He has literally said it. He has fed this story to Hardman. Given that these revelations are coming from Hardman's books, this tells me that this book was not only to rebut the claims made by Harry in spare, they were also to give us an idea of what William's reign as king would look like. How much do we want to bet that William directly collaborated with this author for content for the book? So much for don't explain, don't complain. Before we move on to the next story, though, I saw this funny headline connected to this story, which says that Prince William should abdicate if he can't stand for Church of England, which tells you that he's going to have a lot of pushback if he does not pick up the royal duties. Seems like he's trying to decide which duties he's going to take on, which in a sense makes sense, yeah, because if they wish for a slimmer, or slimmed down monarchy. Surely that means that they have to reduce the amounts of patronages that they're involved with if they're actually going to be doing the work. So on paper, they're going to be making a push to reduce the amount of work they have to do alongside in, in parallel to the slimmed down monarchy as they are now presenting themselves to be. But in any case, he's going to get a lot of pushback if he decides that he's not going to be the head of the Church of England. As, as this story tells us. But in any case, this story should go into the let's talk about it category because it's definitely going to come up again in the future. <laughs> let's talk about it. It's a developing story. So the next story which caught my eye was this one, right? Um, King Charles congratulates King Frederick and Queen Mary on their ascension. There is nothing much to this story. What I just wanted to point out is that King Charles is a better diplomat than Prince William. Why do I say so? So this story, I found it in the Town and Country magazine, yeah, because King Charles has sent the couple a note of good wishes. So the way I see William, he doesn't even care to do the simplest of courteous things. Guys, his reign is going to be a disaster. I will put this in the page filler category. page filler category because this becomes obvious to everyone but it's just as something as simple as this illustrates the difference in the approach between the two of them anyway moving on to the next story so the next story that came up was this one which i thought was quite an important story about Sarah Ferguson, who continues to enjoy royal privilege of using her duchess title without any pushback from the media, as opposed to Meghan and Harry doing the same thing. So we all know what's behind it, but you know, in a certain, to a certain degree, we kind of have to play their game a bit as we push back at them because they say Fergie was allowed to keep her title. They acknowledge it is it's in print where they show that they acknowledge that she's allowed to keep her 
title. They also say she uses her title in professional settings such as her podcast and author of her books. And I saw another article which said, Megan was furious at the royal family over the different rules that they have applied to her, which if it was true, it would make sense because the discrepancy in the treatment is kind of obvious. But for those who are reading, you'll be surprised how many people read the news and actually believe the rubbish that they're reading. And so for those who are reading the news and thinking that there's any credence to be put on a story like this, this is just the media trying to continue their smear campaign, trying to put Megan in the box of the angry black woman and trying to frustrate everything Harry and Megan are doing commercially. And if you've been following my series on the Byline Times, um, if you've been following the Byline Times um, series that I've been doing on my channel, can you give me a thumbs up in the in the comment section? So they have been trying to first cookies and cream. You're right. They've been trying to. They have been trying to frustrate Harry and Meghan's uh, commercial ventures to force them to drop their cases against the media and to come back under the control of the royal family. So this story, anyway, just goes into the reinforcement of the smear campaign category and... The next story, ah, and then we got the news that Kate was in hospital for an abdominal surgery. And does anybody know yet what this abdominal surgery was for? No clue. Some people say it was a hysterectomy. Some people say it was a facelift. Some people went as far as saying that it wasn't any of these, that Kate had been a victim of domestic violence. <laughs> because there were pictures of a convoy rushing to a hospital somewhere in Sandringham. I don't know any of these, and I will not be sharing those stories either until we get some more concrete evidence about exactly what is going on. But what can be said to be true, though, is the Daily Mail's meltdown. They mills this situation to the nth degree. The meltdown was epic. Epic. Yeah. Reba, yeah, that's absolutely right. They demonetized the Duchess of Sussex. I have been in touch with her. Uh, I DM'd her on Twitter and I suggested, uh, tell me guys what you guys think. Um, tell me guys what you guys think in the comments. So I suggested um, that we get in touch and we collaborate because um, the, the Sussex friendly channels are suppressed on YouTube. There is no doubt about it. But I feel like one of the ways that we can combat this the suppression is if there is or if there are one or two of the channels which is able to produce a high volume of videos on a daily basis, like the news channels. So I offered to, uh, I offered Anne an opportunity to do her videos or do some videos on my channel so that she can earn the money from those videos on my channel while she's waiting for her 4,000 hours on the new channel she has created. 
to um, reach the YouTube earning goals. Because I know that YouTube allows creators to have teams. So we should have a team to be able to um, push back sufficiently. But tell me, guys, tell me what you guys think in the comments about this idea. Because I suffered the same thing. I had, uh, I think, two or three channels demonetized as well. And one of the ways that I have succeeded in... Uh, one of the ways that I have succeeded in uh, maintaining a demonetization on my channel is to not share any videos from other cre creators as well, because it looks like they use any excuse at all to demonetize Sussex friendly channels and they don't do the same to the non Sussex friendly channels. So if any of you guys know me and you know her, uh, please speak to her and let's make it happen because I believe that we can do this. We can absolutely do this. She can do it on my channel. We can do it on anybody else's channel. It doesn't have to be mine, but if we're going to, we should be able to earn. It was so hard for me when my channels were demonetized um, because in some cases you have to wait for three months before you're able to monetize again. And that's for the channel that was demonetized. And for the new channel, you have to wait for to get to 4,000 watch hours before you can um, monetize the channel again. So in the meantime, the bills are going to be looking at you and you're going to be looking at the bill. <laughs> you're going to be looking at the bills. So, Anyone who knows them or anyone who would like to collaborate in that way, um, let's have a central channel that we use for that and, and, and see what we can do to support each other. And I will leave that there. It's Yes, Connie, Connie Balma, you're absolutely right. Um, if Anne wants that, that's fine. I've spoken to her. I think at the moment she's in a state of shock. She was absolutely not expecting what happened today to happen. And so she said she thinks she doesn't know whether um, YouTube would allow that. But uh, I don't think YouTube doesn't have any rules against people working as a team. You can all, so we can have a team of people contributing to a channel. It would just, um, increase our visibility on the algorithm as well. Okay, so that's the end of that pitch. <laughs> um, so moving on. So we, what we were talking about? Yeah, we were talking about this news, this epic meltdown of the media concerning... And sorry, before I go on, let me just answer this question from Connie. And does that uh, mean, I think, does that mean Anne can use your channel and moderate it? Whatever can help. And um, let's do it. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, I would still own my channel, but if she has something to do, she can do it from my channel and then um, earn the money from that video and we we can discuss it and agree that whatever she earns from the video she did on my channel she will get that i would not have anything to do with that i just feel like it's better than her waiting until she gets her 4000 hours before she's able to earn any money again. So, but I feel like there is a divide because she doesn't know me very well and uh, I don't know her. So, she might also be trying to be very cautious. So, if there's anyone who is used to me and used to her, link us up together, assure her that uh, I am not a deranger 
and um, it's something that YouTube would not have any problems with. And um, let's get it started. I believe that this is something we should have done a long time ago. And I am happy to help with all the back work needed. I'm doing this full time now anyway, so we might as well, if we're going to go hard, we might as well go as hard as possible. They're hitting us hard, so we might as well go harder. And um, if they're coming with one strategy, we should change strategies to keep to keep in step. And what are we doing to protect ourselves and um, show ourselves up anyway? Not much. But if anyone knows her and can facilitate that conversation, I am open to it. Anyway, let's continue. We don't have that much to go. So we were talking about the media's epic meltdown concerning Kate Middleton's announcement. So it was so much that, let's see, it was so much that the, uh, we had people saying, um, the media's reaction to Kate's announcement was the most unhinged thing you would read today. <laughs> Um, they go to. They went on to say that it would sh that Kate's uh, announcement will send a shiver down our spines and shows how threadbare the royal resources are, which prompted uh, people on social media to say, um, "Morning tweets is Richard K on drugs?" Ah, I, I wonder. Someone ask him. And another person said, millions of Britons on the breadline, inflation's rising, World War Three is looming, and then there's Richard K. <laughs> oh. So in the same tone, Prince William has been so praised for going to visit his wife in hospital, which sparked even more debate about whether men should be praised for doing what is normal, right? So um, is it is it on you? Why are men praised so much when they just do the standard things? Like when they go to see their wives in the hospital, they're like, oh, you went to see your wife in the hospital. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, you went to take your children to school. Oh, that's so very nice. Like, they're your kids. You're so, you are supposed to take them to school. You are supposed to see, look after your wife if she happens to be in hospital. What's up with that? I don't get it. But it's not unusual. <laughs> it's not unusual <laughs> for that to happen. Anyway, um, one Eagle Eye squad noticed that Christian Jones of the Cash for Scandal fame was seen in the convoy following William to the hospital. This prompted more backlash I haven't captured it here because I saw the backlash after I created this presentation video, but uh, people were saying, so when is the real scandal regarding the royal family going to break? <laughs> is, the royal, is the real scandal the rose bushes or is it something else? And if you think about it, there was a time William went to some other country. Do you guys remember? And he was seen having a sandwich in an LGBTQ friendly sandwich bar. So what is the real story? Anyway. Um, 
The latest of this story, though, is that the media are looking at who was standing for Kate while she's recuperating from her mysterious illness. Apparently, Princess Beatrice has been nominated for the role. Look at this headline, which says, Emergency meetings held as Princess Beatrice asks to stand in for Kate Middleton amid royal crisis. After all said and done, what category should... After all said and done, if you... This is why I'm very suspicious, right, of these um, medical announcements. Because to me, the royal family have been priming Princess Beatrice and Mike Tyndall and Zara Tyndall for a while. If you remember, um, Princess Beatrice followed, went to that wedding in the Middle East with. Um, Kate and William, you know, that wedding that William went to where he was telling Kate to hurry up. <laughs> Beatrice was there and it just seems like he was gradually, gradually bringing her closer and closer. And you remember that Beatrice had that meeting. It was actually Beatrice and Eugenie who had that meeting with Piers Morgan that, uh, went viral anyway i feel like this when they say the medical announcement has been planned for a while i believe it not that i believe that they actually have medical conditions but i believe that the medical announcements have been planned for such a while so it is possible that they um it is very possible that they've been priming Beatrice and Mike Tyndall for a time such as this. I think that they have been trying to test the waters uh, on this simply because they believe that people would not be so happy to see people uh, step into Harry and Meghan's shoes without something more than the issues on ground making the way for it to happen. Anyway, so I would put this though in the let's talk about it category simply because I think it's going to come back again in the future. There's, it's a developing story and I think that there's going to be more on this story again in the future. And we've got two more stories to go. What's this? Two more? No, three more. So we've just got this. Oh, this is not even that big of a deal. So the next story which made up our roundup list was this Megan and Harry in the... Megan and Harry... Megan and Harry's in-house marriage counsellor, who they turned to after argument. Guys, they're referring to Doria. They are so pained, so very pained that Doria has access to Harry and Meghan on a daily basis. Harry and Meghan probably brought Doria into the fold because they could protect Doria better if she was living with them. Plus the fact that they have two young children and she's a grandma but more the security thing than the children because Doria seemed to be someone who was living her life independently. So it was, I'm sure it was more about the security, but they're so pained. They're so, 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 so pained about Doria having steady access to Harry and Meghan. Anyway, it's a non-story really. Um, but I'll just put it in the page filler category, okay? So the next bit of shocking news we received after this one was the news about... King Charles's announcement about going into the hospital for benign prostate treatment. 
Well, it's nice that we know exactly the reason why he went into hospital, but it put all sorts of images in my head. <laughs> it's almost like too much information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did I really need to know anything about King Charles's enlarged prostate? I didn't really need to know anything about his enlarged prostate. <laughs> anyway, in their way of smarmy praises, King Charles was praised for the update, calling him wise for getting ahead of any news stories of anyone seeing him getting into the hospital for treatment. The delirious praise for the royal family continued, something that it marks an era of openness for the royal family. <laughs> and of course, the media could not report on the king's health without dragging Harry and Meghan into it, right? So it went from the king needs surgery to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle silent after Prince K Princess Kate and King Charles's health updates. And some people were even questioning because K uh, William had confirmed that he will be cancelling all his engagements to ensure that he can take care of his wife and children. Cancelling all, all his engagements, guys. Cancelling all his engagements. <sighs> so then we had even people in the media asking questions, saying things like, it's unheard of, I think, to have three of the most senior royals temporarily out of action, postponing engagements. <laughs> but they didn't dare go further than that. So Queen Camilla confirms that she will be stepping up and that the Queen King was fine and then she will be acting for the King. To which we swiftly, within the hour after that announcement, got another one saying Princess Anne, Prince Edward and Sophie to step up for royal family amid King Charles and Kate Middleton's operations. It seems like Princess Anne was like, no, 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 B. No, don't even, don't. I know when my brother is around you, it's literally Queen Camilla who is the king. But now that he's not going to be around, it's going to be Princess Anne who is going to be king. <laughs> Allegedly, shall we say. <laughs> even the... Psychics chimed in and they said they had warned King Charles to be extra careful with his prostate because he would likely need treatment for it. I tell you, you cannot make this stuff up. But the one piece of news which I can agree with is Richard Kay's headline in the Daily Mail, which said King Charles's slimmed down monarchy is coming apart at the seams, just as Anne predicted. That is right, absolutely correct. So anyway, I would put this one in the let's talk about it category simply because I feel like it's a developing story. There's going to be more on this story coming in. In fact, I'm sure there's even more stories coming about it, being give, um, published about it today. It's an ever-changing story. I saw before I, I came on, that the media are now outright, outrightly regretful, saying, oh, if Harry and Meghan were here, Meghan would have been able to step in for Kate and all these questions about Kate's mysterious illness would have been subdued. But now Kate is now being targeted because she is not coming out to say exactly why she's in hospital. Well, duh. <laughs> and somebody else rightly said, well, they did offer you an half in and half out. And you said, and you said bugger off. So 
As you make your bed, so shall you lie on it. Anyway, so um, the next story, which, oh, first of all, before we move on, yes, uh, the next story which caught my attention was this headline which confirmed that Prince Harry had dropped his libel case claim, right? Prince Harry's spokesperson for the Sussexes said the Duke was focusing instead on the safety of his family and his legal case against the Home Office over security arrangements for himself, his wife, and his children when they are in the UK. So uh, this is where this is where I ask you if you've been following my series on the Byline Times. Um, articles exposing the connection between Murdoch and the royal family, Murdoch and the media and the police corruption. Can you give me a thumbs up in the chat? Because I can see that a lot of squaddies were hugely disappointed at this news. And although I'm not in Prince Harry's inner circle, I'm not even in his outer circle. I'm not even in the fringes. I'm just somewhere thousands of miles away observing what is happening. I can completely see what is happening with this case and why he needed to drop it. First of all, these legal cases are a money pit. And second of all, if you've been following this, that's the reason why I asked the question, whether you've been following the series, because if you've been following the series, the series will tell you the level of the level of danger that the Sussexes are currently facing. And when he says that he's decided to focus his attention on the security arrangements for himself, his wife, and his children, it just rings so true to me. It just rings so true to me. He is telling you his mind and uh, for some reason the, because people are focused on the smoke and mirrors stories so every day they come up with these stories all the rest of everything that we have discussed so far are all smoke and mirrors really stories about uh who Harry and Meghan talk to when they're having arguments, stories about Sarah Ferguson and her use of her royal titles, stories about King Charles sending good wishes to the king and queen of Denmark, and all those other stories. They're all the stories that they have, they publish on a daily basis to distract our attention away from the real story. The real story that is going on in the UK right now, uh, it has to do with the phone hacking case. <laughs> the phone hacking case. The phone hacking case tells you all you need to know about the reason why this particular claim was withdrawn. Um, Anyway, what do you what did you guys think about uh, Prince Harry withdrawing from this story? Safety is priority, right? King Henry acted wisely. I agree with his choice. Safety is his priority. Exactly. It, absolutely exactly. So for that case, it has been speculated that Prince Harry will have to pay Daily Mail's cost of 750000 although the costs are yet to be determined. This means that Prince Harry now has three ongoing cases to deal with. First, you've got his case against the Daily, um, sorry, the Home Office about his security, right? Then, then second, you've got his, and you've got his privacy cases against the Sun, and you've got the privacy case against the Daily Mail. He has already won his phone hacking case against the Mirror, but it will be months, months, months and months before these cases come to trial. So these are the cases that really matter to Prince Harry. 
And this is definitely confirmed fact, which we would, which may definitely come up again in the future. So for that reason, I will put this story in the let's talk about it category, just because we will we will need to come back to this story again. And then you've got, so you've got the, what's this one? Yeah, you've got the, oh, this is the last story. Uh, this is... Yeah, Prince Harry receiving his Living Legend Awards. How happy was everyone? I was awake until uh, almost five o'clock or six o'clock in the morning yesterday trying to follow up and um, see whether I could live stream the event and get information about it. But I'm glad the way it was handled as well. Um, as we all know, Prince Harry was honored with a living legend of aviation medal by John Travolta. And John Travolta, he referenced his dance with Prince Harry's mother, Princess Diana. And uh, just reading through one of the articles, I saw that John Travolta made a funny comment when he put Harry on the spot, asking him whether he remem remembered the details of his first flight. And Harry said it was classified. I'm happy that despite the media's best efforts to put Harry in an awkward situation every time he has a public facing event, that the controversial moments have become less and less and less over time. It looks like Harry and Meghan are getting more and more comfortable in their skin in their new normal. So... Um, of course, the UK media had been prepared to write the articles implying that Harry and Meghan were partying away while King Charles and Kate were indisposed. But I think it was best that Meghan didn't attend the event. And it's almost, and I hate to say it, I really hate to say it, it was almost serendipitous just because um, it was um, almost better for her to have that as a reason not to attend from every perspective. Nothing else would have been good enough reason for her not to be there from the perspective of the fact that that group of people would have also wanted her to grace the event, to add cachet to the event, to glamorize the event, to support Harry. And then the UK media were expecting her to be there so that she, they can, she can help them sell papers. And at the same time, um, her not being there and them not rushing off to the UK to save Harry, uh, to, sorry, to save Kate and William from the pit that they dug for themselves. <laughs> Having an ill child is a good enough reason to stay with them. So we would have loved to see her, but they know best, right? There's an African proverb that says, he who wears the shoe knows how it pinches. So I trust them and that's that. But from this article, we can all see that they write their articles ahead of time with a smear, with a, um, with a slant leaning towards the smear campaign every single time. From this article, though, you can see that they had written it ahead of time, but they failed to update every area of the article that they had written. So you can see that Harry arrives without Meghan at Living Legends of Aviation Awards. And then below that, you've got Prince Harry and Meghan Markle looks glamorous. <laughs> Such an obvious fail. <laughs> I tell you, as a British citizen, and um, a believer in the British system, Harry and Meghan's case has completely opened my eyes to all the issues, the reality of the situation in the UK. 
I tell you, it's been such an eye opener since I started paying attention to Harry and Meghan's case. In any case, I would put this in, I would put this in the let's talk about it category just simply because it's a factual event that I took place and um it's i'm sure it remains a developing story we're going to hear more about this in the first place because i wondered why this award was even necessary and i know that the british media are not done bitching about it so uh, we'll place this one in the let's talk about it category so Let's, to summarize all of this, let's look at the stories in the let's talk about it category. So in the first place, you've got Prince Harry's attack on Kate Middleton was the lowest of the low for Prince William. You've got um, Queen protected weak Andy with fears he'd be more damaging outside the loop. You've got Harry and Meghan's close relationship with Mike and Zara Tindall. You've got... Prince William could be the first king not to lead the Church of England in five centuries. You've got Daily Mail, Kate Middleton, Meltdown might be the most unhinged thing you read today. You've got King Charles to undergo common safe prostate surgery. You had Prince Harry issues new statement that after dropping libel case, and then John Travolta references 1985 Princess Diana dance as he presents Prince Harry with aviation honor. Just looking at these stories gives me an indication of the media's agenda. It tells me that they have, uh, they are now seriously working to roll back the claims made by Prince Harry and Spare. Are they succeeding? What do you guys think? To me, it helps the monarchies to validate their belief because they can point to the new book as proof, forgetting that the person writing the book is not a member of the royal family. <laughs> I also saw somewhere where they were basically begging Prince Harry not to write his second book. They're basically begging Harry not to write his second book. You know, he said he had how many hundred pages that he... Um, that he... Uh, did not include in spare, which could have been in spare, which, I mean, I think Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's silence worries the royal family because they know that anytime they are silent, it means that they are working on something. <laughs> and just more to the point of the, some of the, the comments some of you are making, which is that I personally, I believe that Prince uh, Princess Kate and Kate's King Charles's illnesses were planned, as I said before, because Kate and William have been complaining about the workload that they were saddled with after Harry and Meghan left. Remember that meeting? Uh, as I said, remember the meeting of Princess Beatrice and Eugenie and Piers Morgan? I feel like they've been cultivating this idea that. Uh, Beatrice and Mike Tyndall and Zara could replace Harry and Meghan. I believe that they have been slow to in, in, uh, they have been slow to edge them into that position because they have been afraid that the public they wanted to make sure that they completely ruin Harry and Meghan's reputation before they slide them into their positions because. Um, no matter how badly people think about Harry and Meghan, people still think of Harry as Princess Diana's son, Princess Diana's boy. So um, although they've been silent as they watch the king, 
be brutal to Harry, but maybe to their minds, they're afraid that that would have been a step too far for the British public. Who knows? But I certainly think that it helped them divert attention away from the Epstein scandal, which was all over the place at the time. So where are we in the PR battle? Where are we in the PR battle? I think that the royal family is beginning to infiltrate the American media, and I worry about what that means for Harry and Meghan. I am sure that they must have a plan, but not knowing the plan makes me feel worry for them. But they are two brilliant people with a fantastic team beside them. So I'm certain that whatever they come up with will make sense at the end of the day. But in recent times, have you guys noticed, have you guys noticed in recent times, right, that the, um, the people who have been around Harry Hem and Meghan have been targeted by one form of scandal or the other? A, few, a couple of, I'm not going to repeat the scandals here just so that I don't amplify the scandals, but in recent times there have been scandals uh, targeting Tyler Perry and then there's this recent scandal targeting um, Oprah Winfrey so that's something to think about but I'm sure that it's something that they are working on behind the scenes don't get me wrong I'm not saying that they're not working on it but of course as some as Someone who is not in the know, standing one million miles away from the action. I just worry a little bit about what is happening for them because it just... Um, did you guys see... Uh, sorry, I don't have the video here and I will not be sharing videos on my channel just simply because I discovered that sharing these videos from Twitter is one of the easiest ways to get your channel demonetized. But there was a video floating around on Twitter showing um, Piers Morgan in an interview on The Breakfast Club. So where he went to go and educate Charlemagne the God, who is an embarrassment because he didn't push back about why asking about a child's skin color was not uh, racist. Anyway, one thing I'm happy about though is the obvious sign that they seem to be updating their strategy all the time to ensure that they focus their energies on the things that align directly with their brand. Yeah. Well, let me just look at your comments before I move to the next bit. So, Antoinette says, yeah, that's maybe why Pismorin was on there. <laughs> but you would have to assume us Americans are stupid. Okay, I'm just, you know, just... I'm just worried, just worried for them. Um, but it also told me that um, for Piers Morgan to go to America to discuss Harry and Meghan, that they are actively trying to campaign against anything that will cast Harry and Meghan in a good light. Good light. And... Uh, it seemed like he was not able to get onto any of the other reputable TV networks like ABC or CBS or on any of the other ones that he had been able to get up. <laughs> Antoinette says the Breakfast Club has their own issues to cover up. Yeah, exactly what I thought. I, um, th that ish with DJ Envy. Anyway, so... um. That's all I have for today's podcast. 
Um, my next video is going to be on Tuesday where I'll be discussing the Byline Times article exposing how Murdoch hacked the British politics and how this ties into the phone hacking case. Is it? Someone said the Breakfast Club is owned by Rupert Murdoch. Is that true? Oh my gosh, really? Oh, sorry. Uh, where is this? That would explain a lot. That would explain a lot. That okay, that would explain a lot because he had taken the he had taken the position of defending Trump. And I, I would definitely look it up. This is my favorite thing to do, research. <laughs> I will definitely look it up. Really? Oh wow. No wonder Charlemagne could not say anything. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. That show is on the Fox channel. Oh, is that no wonder the um the breakfast club has been going downhill since Angela Yee left. It's there could be that could have been a point of a conflict because they have gone um more towards the right extreme right in their views since she left and there has been less pushback on these kind of issues oh wow 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 it could be because only his companies go after our faves Hmm, okay. Anyway, Compton, thank you, Compton, Cali girl. Thank you very much for your compliment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You said, I, was, I saw it, but um, I'm still trying to figure out how to slow things down. But I saw the um, compliment as I was going along. You said that I was doing a great job on the live. Thank you very much. I'll take I'll take that. <laughs> um anyway, so for those who have been following the series, can you give me a thumbs up if you would like me to continue or you are all series out and you prefer for me to move on to something else? Can you let me know in the comments? I'm just going to look through some of the comments before I sign off. Um, Okay, so just looking through the comments in the comment section. And, but I, I, the reason why I'm asking is because the, not a lot of people are watching uh, the videos, not that those people who are interested can do anything about it, but I think it's important to do. So I'll continue to do it. Um, and then it looks like I'm going to gradually reduce the uh, number of um, recorded videos I do and convert to doing live videos. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm really grateful for all your compliments. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead to subscribe. Um, 
thank you for everyone who has stayed with me. I've been here one hour, 37 minutes. Oh my God. I didn't know I could do it. I, the first five times I've tried to do a live, it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> and each time I kept swearing, oh, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to do this again. But I find just from what I've been able to do today, I find that it's actually easier. Um, oh, TMCD, thank you very much. You've been watching this channel for a while. Oh, hello. Hello. Good to thank you for acknowledging. Um. First five times I ever tried to do a live video, it did not go well. In fact, you know what? Today's live is the best live I have done. And I literally have been up since the crack of dawn <laughs> practicing <laughs> how to do the live. So thank you very much. I feel like I've worked hard today. <laughs> so, um, that's all I have for today folks uh, until my next video on Tuesday thank you for hanging with me and um, look forward to a weekend live like this every Saturday until I figure out when I can do the next one in between the week after the day when I do my documentary. So at the moment, I am, well, trying to keep to a regular schedule of Wednesdays and Saturdays. This is the first week I've been able to keep to my own schedule, which is great. So I will um think of another day since i don't have to do a video which i will be editing i think um i will increase my um video recording days to three days of the week rather than just the two but i will share any updates on that in the com on my community posts but um, what else do I have to say? I think that's it. Do you guys have anything else you want to tell me? If not, I will be signing out now. Thank you very much for hanging with me. Until next time, this is Weezy signing out. Bye. <laughs>